Okay, guys, welcome to LaGuardia, one of the most beautiful airports in the United States. It used to be one of the, uh, dare I say, ugliest airports in the United States for the big city of Manhattan, uh, but now it's completely renovated. It is absolutely gorgeous, uh, but we are at gate 64 on Asobo, which is Charlie 31 at LaGuardia, Delta Terminal. In PMGG colors, Delta never flew the 777-300. They had 200s. They no longer fly the 777. This is Delta Flight 540. It's an FSI panel profile. And uh, I'm going to just hold on. Uh, we have loaded most of everything inside. Done the origination pre-flight. We got the tug hooked up. We're going to get pushed back, taxi out, alpha, take off on 1-3. That's 1-3 going that way right there. And head down to Atlanta on a very complex profile, uh, believe it or not, it's not going to make it all the way to Atlanta. Why would Delta be flying LaGuardia to Atlanta in a 777-300? Well, let's say they chartered PMDG chartering services to fly their flight for them, Delta Flight 540, and they're taking the Atlanta Braves home from LaGuardia <clears throat> to Atlanta. They just played the Mets, we'll say. And the Mets swept them in a four-game series. <clears throat> They've got this big airplane rail already to take them down to Atlanta. <clears throat> there, there's the realism for you. Sorry, I have a little bit of allergies here. Let's go inside. Um, take a look at what we've done. Let's go to the overhead. Uh, overhead is set. We're getting ready to get clearance. FSI panel. Uh, we've got to start that up. And there it is. Training right here. And we're all set. Um, we're going to come down. We've got ATIS set. We'll get the ATIS, get clearance, and then we'll talk about the box and get going. All right, let's get our clearance. LaGuardia clearance. This is Delta 540 Heavy. Gate Charlie 31 like to request clearance to Atlanta. Information Alpha. Okay, Delta 540, heavy, cleared to Atlanta, runway 13, LaGuardia 7, departure, Coney climb, expect vectors to the Pottstown, 059 radial, then as filed, climb to 5000, expect 300, 10 minutes after departure, uh, squawk 2254, departure freak 120.4. Ready for push, 131475 for Delta 540 here. Right, let's go over to ramp frequency, 2254 set, T-A-R-A. -A. Uh, now let's go to the box because we got some work to do here. That's the part I wanted you guys to be part of. So we're here at really what is Charlie 31, a Sobo gate 64. It's a Delta terminal. We're going to push back nose to right alpha. Uh, remember, there's a lesson plan that goes with this FSI panel, so I know what the tax instructions are going to be. Alpha all the way around to Echo, hold short of runway 422. Cleared across third right is Charlie Charlie. That's where our plan is. Our plan is we're going to be doing the Coney climb now. Hang on for this. This is this is complicated. First thing, speed restriction 250 below 11. Let's go to the box, straighten that out right now. So we're going to be into uh, VNAV. So let's go to profile, uh, vertical nav rather. Sorry guys, been working a lot on uh, different airplanes. So um, TFTI MD11 to be specific. So you might hear me say some interchange uh, terms that are inaccurate there we go so there's 250 at 11 instead of 250 at 10 because we are going over lana 
Uh, they told us we're going to do the Coney climb. Let's take a look at that. Runway 13, Coney climb. Right turn heading 180. 180. 5,157 is V2. We're VNAV, no LNAV because we'll be heading select until we intercept. Back to the box. Take a look at this. And then uh, Coney climb. And then intercept the 043 radial inbound. So it's a 223 course into Canarsie. So let's build that in the box. We have a visual depiction of what we're going to do. And then they said on our clearance, we're going to intercept the Pottstown 059 radial inbound, which is the 239 course into Pottstown. So let's get our box looking like it's supposed to look here. And uh, other things on here, we've got a 230 until intercepting. Don't worry about that. We'll be above 1500, which we have to be. And uh, let's get that course set up. It happens real quick. Concept here is get you turned inside of the Kennedy traffic when departing on 1-3. All right, let's go in here, into the box, legs. Uh, they said Canarsie. Uh, we're just going to build a point out uh, 043 and just about like eight miles out from Canarsie and just drop that right in here. And then after that, we're going to go direct Canarsie. Now, it should be the 223 course if we did it right. And there it is, 223 course. Then we line select Canarsie down, put in the 223 because we're supposed to fly outbound. On the Canarsie 223, we'll say 25 miles, just like that, and execute it. Now, after that, it's direct Lana, but they tell us to expect direct to Pottstown. So, um, Pottstown 039. So, get rid of the uh, Lana and the Pottstown uh, 059. And we'll put that out at um, 40 miles here it'll go in the correct place and from there direct Pottstown and there it is 240 course inbound which is 239 really uh, so the map now looks good both sides and I'm gonna put the uh, here come in here bring this down to 10 in case we lose engine um, let's do a little takeoff brief guys we talked about the taxi out talk about the SID takeoff brief short runway here uh, we're very lightweight. We're already below max landing weight, even to come back in here for something catastrophic. But generally, when you take off out of LaGuardia, you head on over to uh, Kennedy. Kennedy uh, or Newark, depending on where you are on the city. If you took off on 3-1, Newark's right there. If you take off on 1-3, obviously heading towards Kennedy, you'd uh, 3,000, they'd have you contact Kennedy Tower and do a visual on in for if you had to get on the ground in a hurry. Um, that is that. We'll talk about the rest later. And we've got a lot to talk about. It'll be story time with Father Time. This will be all time stamped. We'll have a nice presentation for you. You can pop around wherever you need to be. Uh, all I can say is um, you might want to think about getting an FSI panel. It's pretty darn good. Um, so let's go here. I'm going to give them a call. They said ramp when ready for push. And that's 31475. And Delta ramp. Delta 540 at Charlie 31 to push back start engines information alpha. Delta 540 heavy, uh, push and start approve facing northeast uh, ground 217 ready, Sam. All right, let's come back inside. Looks like the equipment's all out of the way. Uh, let me just make sure one thing. Before we get going here, here's our takeoff data. Uh, I just want to make sure doors are all open, dolls are all armed, ground service vehicles are all released. And uh, that should be pretty good. I did all the maintenance on the aircraft, ground connections, chalks are released. Um, so we should be able to get out of here. Let's see. Restart the pushback. Okay, let's go to the overhead and get the pre-push items done. Um, what we probably should be doing here, guys, before we do that, is move this out of the way a little bit and go checklist. Flight deck door, I did not check that. That's closed and secured. Passenger signs are on MCP. We talked about takeoff speeds are good. CD pre-flight, we did that trim. We will get that in a second. Taxi takeoff brief and beacon on. So let's go to the overhead. And we're going to put on, move this again, right? And we're going to go, beacon is coming on. 
We turn on the hydraulic pumps, uh, wax on right to left. These are the six hydraulic pumps. Like this, come over to the fuel pumps. Uh, nothing's in the center, but we'll turn on the four normals. Got the beacon set, and that sounds good. And let's push back. All right, let's go to the overhead. I'm going to have Bob start for us, but uh comes up here. We'll start the left one first, back down, bring up the left fuel lever, call up the engine page. And uh, by the way, this checklist is complete. This is a four taxi checklist. And we'll have uh, him take a look. While that's starting, we'll look outside and have a little fun. If I were that guy, I wouldn't park there. PMGG, nice job, guys. Yeah, I was quality assurance pilot for TFDI. I still am. Uh, I tried to get on the T, uh, PMDG team. They accepted me, but then I was working for TFDI. They never called me, so that didn't happen, uh, understandably. So, uh, love the 777. I retired off it back in September. I miss flying it, that's for sure. All right, looks like that one started. Uh, yes, it looks good. Let's go back to the overhead. Start the right one. Try to get as much done as we can quickly to get us on our way to Atlanta. <laughs> All right, there we go. Starting. Let Bob do it. Let's go back outside. Starting up, you get a uh, three auto starts allowed. Um, sometimes it'll shut back down. You don't even know why. And it was trying up again. It'll motor forever because it's going to get the EGT down below 100. So, so you really don't even have indication sometimes why it's doing an auto, why it's doing an auto start. Let's get rid of these cats. All right. Two normal starts, flap uh, five, please. And let's do the checklist. Any ice not required, we're above 10 degrees. Uh, we got to do a recall here. If there's any problems, it would show up here. Got to do this. Uh, flight controls, ground equipment, we'll wait on that. So let's go back up to the flight controls. Captain usually does the rudder. All the way. Six seconds, stop to stop. Take your time. And the FO will ask the captain if his, if it's clear, and they'll say, yeah, sure, go ahead. It means get your belly and your knees out of the way. Elevators are good. Nice and slow. And flight controls are checked. Back up to the checklist. Flight controls check, and ground equipment, we'll get that in a second. Flaps for five, after takeoff checklist. We usually blank this out, guys. Um, they do it, and that's the way, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with it. That was procedure, uh, just so that if anything happened, you had, uh, it would pop up the open screen. Otherwise, you have your engines. I personally, old school, I would have preferred to leave the engine page, secondary engine page, up there. So we'll wait for this guy to give us a salute. And meanwhile, we're going to taxi. They told us to contact ground when ready. Usually, you'd have ramp over here, ground over here. There they are out there. They're holding the flag up for us. Flash the light. Yeah, okay, okay. Here we go. And when they leave, we'll say, I have a salute. Clear left. Clear right. And say, I have a salute. LaGuardia ground, this is Delta 540 Heavy off Charlie 31, taxi with Alpha.
Alpha Echo, shorter one, uh, runway four, Delta 540 heavy. Clear left and right, salutes good, and here we go. 40% or less. If you got to go over 40, you can, but you got to call ground and make sure it's clear behind you, especially in the ramp area. You've got a small aircraft, you've got people and baggage equipment, baggage carts. I've seen in my years many baggage carts go flying across the ramp, even from a 35% power if they're empty. If you take down here in this big 7, uh, 777 300, when the point is in that corner of the windscreen, you can start your turn. Not necessarily, you see right down and right about there is when you start it. There is a camera. Uh, it's not modeled here at PMDG. I don't think it's ever going to be. Um, but the way you would activate it, somebody asked me that once, so I'll show it to you. Let me go here. Right here is a camera. And you, you display, usually display it down here for the captain left inboard and uh, put the camera on. If you need a camera light, it's here. You weren't allowed to operate it during takeoff and landing for obvious reasons. Otherwise, that's we would do it all the time just to watch ourselves fly. Okay, so uh, let's do some uh, for takeoff checklist stuff that's not on the Boeing checklist here. Uh, we get the weights, winds, and temperatures. Weights, we're doing assumed takeoff uh, with a 40 degrees assumed temp. So as long as the temperature is below 40, well, it's 18, Right now, the temperature is good. Weights, uh, assume temperature, flex to power takeoff, uh, has plus 3,000 on your takeoff performance sheet. Um, so if, as long as you're under 3,000 above, you're good to go. So let's say you're 1,000 above, that's fine on assume. If you're doing a max power takeoff, if your temperature's above 18, whatever's on the TPS, or the weight's above whatever's on the TPS, you need new numbers for max power takeoff. Weights, winds, and temperatures, the winds... If you get a tailwind, you subtract. You, you look at your takeoff uh, power sheet. Uh, it's usually around 1,300 on the 777-300. And for every knot of tailwind, let's say you have 10 knots, that will be 13,000 pounds off your runway limited. Not your climb limited, your runway limited. <clears throat> Weight winds and temperature check. Uh, all right, that looks good. Let's try to do takeoff briefing. There's Golf Fox Echoes way down there. Uh, be my takeoff. We're going to go uh, heading select at uh, 400 feet right to 180. I'll get the autopilot on, and then I'll go direct. When we're on the 180 heading, I'll go direct to Canarsie 223 course on the FMS. And we're climbing to 5,000. We've got the 230 restriction until intercepting. Got to be at or above 1,500. 250 below 11. 3,000 is a good min sector if we get an engine out. If we get an engine out, we'll go straight ahead in VNAV, clean it up, get radar vectors over to Kennedy, and land at Kennedy. This is Foxtrot here. That's Echo. We'll hold short. Any questions? No questions. Now, you don't you do not do briefings or talking uh, when you're... I should have my taxi light on here. When you're holding number one. So right about now, we stop talking. Cross runway four, Echo, Charlie, Charlie, Golf for Delta 540 Heavy. All right, guys, clear to cross. Finals clear out there. FO cranks their head around. They say, yeah, it's clear right. Captain says clear left, clear to cross. <clears throat> Echo, Charlie, Charlie, Golf. Charlie, Charlie is the third taxiway. Right there. There we are, third taxiway. Let me get some uh, visual here, huh? Okay, that's a Coney climb, and we got the Pottstown 059 radio. We're ready to go. I'll get my uh, PFD a little brighter. Same thing with my ND. That's a little brighter. I leave it in a 10 mile range for engine out. That way you can follow the extended center line, which is depicted on the nav display. Uh, that's the way you have obstacle clearance. All right, that, remember that's when it's down here, you start your turn on this big one. 200, you can lead it by a little more than that. There we go. All right, usually there's all sorts of aircraft lined up here, so they get you lined up on Alpha, Alpha, Bravo, Bravo, Charlie, Charlie, out on Golf, out on Papa, and you're like number 20. 
but not today. So flight attendants, prepare for takeoff, please. Wonder where your nose gear is. It's right where the speed tape is on the Boeing. Same thing with McDonnell Douglas. The uh, I think the Airbus, though, it's right about where this bar is. But the Boeing's, it's right where the uh, speed tape is. Still on ground. They would usually have you hold short right here. There'll be aircraft all here, and you get your sequence. <clears throat> All right, we got VNAV, no LNAV, because we're going to go heading select, then go direct on our way to Atlanta. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? We'll tell a couple of stories on the way. We'll tell you all the things I'm thinking. I'm a stream of consciousness, guys, and uh, I will, I'm not the best immersion guy, but I am definitely someone who you'll gain a little knowledge from. 18.7, Delta 540, ABC. Now, on the FSI panel, they tune the frequency for you. So once I get out here, do one last safety check of uh, trim, which I think I need to reset, the, make sure the trim is set here. We'll do that in just a second. Get going. they like you to pull all the way up at LaGuardia so they can squeeze up in as many as they can. But before I do that, let me go here. Let me park the brakes. Let me go to uh, the box right here. Take off 4.75. And I have to go to uh, flight controls. I didn't really set the trim. 4.75 set. Oh, yeah, I set it. By the miracle of simhood. Uh, 18.7 set. LaGuardia Tower, Delta 540 heavies, ready for takeoff on 1-3. Finals clear. Line up and wait, 1-3, Delta 540 heavy. Brakes released, finals clear. Clear left and right, here we go. Line up and wait. 400 feet, right to 180. Once we can establish 180 heading, we'll go direct to Canarsie on the 223, which is 04 radio inbound, and climb into 5,000, 250 to 11, 230 till intercepting. And uh, that's our plan. Kennedy is our engine out alternate. Most guys will review, at least silently, in their head, engine out procedures. Now, once you're on the runway, clear to take the runway, most of us will go up. And put on runway turnoff lights, wing lights, not the strobes till you clear. Reason is, somebody might be crossing up here. If they see you with your strobes going, they're thinking you're clear for takeoff. Clear for takeoff, runway 13, Delta 540 heavy. Lights are on, strobes are ready on, and uh, clear for takeoff. Uh, 55%. Let's go to Atlanta. Get these braves. Huh? Oh. oh, somehow these spoilers end up there. All right, let's go. I don't know how they got pulled back, but they did. Not the best immersion, huh? Check. Throttles hold. Two to three degrees per second. At this light weight, we're probably up near 20 degrees. Two to three degrees per second. Man, I've rotated right in that last 1,000 feet, uh, 2,000 feet uh, on, on the Super 80 in those days. Gear up. All right, guys, as promised, once we get up above 400, I am going to go autopilot on. We can do that at 200. There's 400 feet. I'm going to go heading select. So you're heading select 400, go to the box, and put in uh, legs, direct Canarsie, 223. And when I get in that 180 heading, I will execute that and go LNAV. There's 180, execute, box, LNAV, 1,500 feet, climb powers in, flaps one. 
flaps one, flaps up. Go on departure. Uh, have a good day. Delta 540. So here we are. We're in LNAV, VNAV for the 223 inbound. 230 until intercepting. It's starting to turn right now so we can accelerate to 250, which is good since we're doing it. Departure, Delta 540 is intercepting the Canarsie 223 inbound, climbing out of 3 for 5. There's Kennedy out there. Delta 540 up to 9,000 feet. 540 heavy. Uh, t ground tower departure and arrival approach are, uh, we, we say heavy. All right, so we're in VNAV, LNAV. We should be 250 to 11. We're, we're flying inbound on the Canarsie. If you wanted to look at that, uh, some guys like that stuff. You can go to NAVRAD and put that in. Uh, put in Canarsie 223. You really want to? Then you come up here. You can go to VOR, and there you have it. If you're one of those guys, no requirement to do it. it used to be back in the old days, but now we uh, don't do it. There it is. But I'm going to leave it a map. That's good enough for me. Uh, brakes, flaps, after takeoff check. A takeoff checklist complete. Blanket. And there you go. Coming up out of eight for nine. On our way to the city of Atlanta. Eight for nine. This is not uncommon, guys. They will hold you down. Out of Newark, sometimes you're held down at 6,000 feet for 40 miles. And I'm not kidding. Remember, you've got Philadelphia traffic, Baltimore traffic, uh, LaGuardia, Kennedy, and Newark all buzzing around each other. Sometimes you just get locked down. Uh, so coming out of uh, LaGuardia, we have arrival traffic coming in at 11,000 feet above us into Kennedy. They'll usually hold you down at 9 until you clear that arrival traffic. And they hold the arrival traffic up at 11 and then dump them down. Just the way it is. And you know what I didn't do? I never shut the APU down. Should have noticed that on the... Uh, up here. No harm. It's never perfect. You know, I retired after 36 years with the airlines, seven years with the Air Force. I don't think I ever flew the perfect flight. I flew some great flights. I flew some stinky flights. I did some beautiful landings. I did some stinky landings, many of each. Uh, kind of the nature of the game, huh? Humbling. I've told guys this before on my Discord, which I would love if you join. We have a real nice community over there, very positive, supportive. Uh, we have uh, every level of aviation, real aviation, real life, every level of simming, uh, doctors, lawyers, uh, everything, all very positive, very supportive. Ask any questions, make any comments, um, and we'll get, if you don't have the information, we usually can get it for you. Lots of stories told over there. Got guys, uh, new hires with airlines, guys just got their private pilots, guys got their uh, CFIs and moving through the process, talking about the way they're doing it, openly sharing their experiences. Okay, right heading 300, 27.6 for Delta 540. All right, 344, 300, and here we go. 127.6. Thank you, Bob. Delta 540 is at 900,000. Turn right to 300. Delta 540, morning. Hey, good morning. Up to uh, 1, 3,000 feet for Delta 540. We're now with center, so we don't have to say heavy. All right, that's what we asked for. That's what we got. You always double check that. And we'll go ahead and uh, press profile i mean huh, how about vnav activate that power, that's what i asked for power is coming up and that's what we got looks good beautiful day nice easy flight down to atlanta what could go wrong now we're going up towards Atlanta. we really don't have our clearance yet so out of 10 i'll get the uh we usually use 18 in American, but I know um, 
uh, except on the Airbuses. Uh, I know when like that sim, everyone uses 10. Do that. Lights are out, wings out. And I'm going to cycle the no smoking. Let them know that you can call us for non-emergencies. Come back in here, 11. We'll see the speed pop up. There's 11. Speed pops up to 312. And that part is complete. Let's go to the box. Let's set the box up. Uh, remember, it's direct Pottstown. And the 239 is what we're expecting. Execute it. Bring this out a little bit. There it is. Got a ways to go. That was the 059 course they uh, told us to fly. It's uh, 12 for 13. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I recorded this whole thing yesterday. And I've also flown this, by the way, in the Any Builds A300, made a video, and in the Leonardo MD82. So um, I've done it now, and I did it yesterday silently. The mic was off. Um, so I, my wife could hear me scream, she said. I went, oh, my God. I had already done the uh, timestamp. I was uploading it to YouTube. I had done the the uh, skin for the advertisement. I was all ready to go. And uh, I, the mic didn't go on. It happens on OBS. I had it happen about six months ago or more. And uh, I was starting to check the mic every time. And I just lost that habit pattern. Somehow the mic turned off. I'm sure, like most things, it's something I did wrong. I'm sure of that. So we're at 13. Eventually, we're supposed to climb up to 30. That's our final today. Let's go to the box. VNAV, 30's in there. Good time to check the speeds. All looks good. Yeah, don't, if you guys wouldn't mind subscribing, uh, I'm having a blast building this, um, building this channel, building the Discord, interacting with the guys. Sometimes I just leave the guys alone on Discord because they had a lot of exchange. Delta 540, left 280. 280 on the heading. That's what he asked for. And that's what I got. We're in heading VNAV. You you have make enough mistakes flying these things that you learn to uh, do that. Uh, we do a bid sheet every month for our schedule next month, and we, we fill it out. That's what we bid. That's what we got. We think of this as bidding. This is what we asked for. Did we get it? Yes. So you're going back and forth. Of course, before you execute any kind of directs or anything, you make sure the other guy agrees with you. Yeah, you usually are held down out here. It's kind of realistic. The, the uh, historical data builds that into the PDF, the, uh, the fuel. They'll build in historical data that will include the fuel burn, the top of climb, and where it happens. Segment burn 9,000 because they know uh, that you get held up or down all the time, coming or going. Things I like to fly with, I like to fly with uh, not necessarily the waypoints. I don't need that. I like airports on there. I don't usually like the stations. I just like airports. You see it down here? TFC traffic and data. Okay, Delta 540, climb to flight level 220 and intercept the Potsdown 059 radial inbound. Delta 540. All right, there's 220. Get that started first. That's what I asked for. That's what I got. Power is coming up to climb power. Now, we've already done this down here, right? So to review it, we just go Potsdown, direct, and 239. Looks good. Execute. And then you come back to the uh, mode control panel and you hit LNAV. That's what you asked for. That's what you got. LNAV is armed. And that's it. So that was uh, course inbound, outbound, uh, intercepts, how you do it in the 777. 
inbound and outbound inside. That's what I like about this profile for instructional purposes. And that's what I am, guys. I'm a, an instructor. I'm a mentor. I am not a real great entertainment guy. I'm definitely not good with the technology in terms of uh, making you think you're actually in the 777 flying it. I'll tell stories. I'll laugh. I'll do a lot of things I call simisms. I'll make my mistakes. So uh, what I bring to the game is over four decades of aviation experience and a willingness to share. And it's become my retirement calling. My, not my hobby, my calling. It's something I'm enjoying giving back to a community, the aviation community, which has done so much for me and my family over the years, honestly. And there's a transition altitude standard. And I check the lights are out. Just leave the strobes on. Checklist is complete. LNAV is armed. We should be turning on here very shortly. And miles, five miles, probably about a minute and a half. We'll turn on. 19 for 22, going to 30. How much time do we have? It is uh, 15. Let me see here. Delta 540, climb to flight level 300. That's our final, guys. All right, that's what I asked for, and that's what I got. And we're LNAV, BNAV, and we're turning on. I like to keep the heading synced up. The reason is, if they ever give you a heading, and you forgot, and your bug was behind you, the aircraft may turn the wrong way. So a lot of us, before we ever do it, we'll go heading hold, and then do it, in case we've made that mistake. Look outside. Yeah, what a great job this add-on is. Uh, TFDI did a great job, too. Uh, the MD-11, uh, uh, quite honestly, is one of my favorite aircraft I've ever flown. And... Uh, but 777 is my favorite aircraft. I, I, the 75, of course, was great, 76. I've also flown the Super 80, MD-11, uh, Air, Airbus A300-600, 737, 750, 767, 777, 707 in the Air Force. I was a T-37 instructor mostly, but I did spend a couple of years on the tanker, and I did the, uh, oh, you little devil. Generator off light. So we go checklist. Generator off. You can attempt one reset. The condition, the generator circuit breaker is open. Reset the breaker or use the APU to supply. So we're going to go off and on. Oh, the overhead. Yeah, JP, giving me a little work out here. Uh, generator off. You get one reset. And then on. Looks like it stayed on. Generator off light blanks. No. Generate off-flight message stay shown. Yes. Start the APU. Go to the overhead. Start the APU. Should have just left it running, right, guys? And uh, that would be the checklist is complete. Now we have another checklist to go. Equipment cooling. Go to the overhead. Try resetting that. That one reset. Wait two minutes. This allows system full equipment cooling off the auto. Wait one minute. I should have uh, waited a minute, but it worked anyway. Uh, equipment cooling stays. Message stays blank. Yes. No. Next. After 30 minutes of operation at low. Uh, 
I just say, okay, thanks, Jenny. We'll uh, be looking at a diversion. Um, right now, we're planning on going to Atlanta unless we hear from you. Uh, we'll contact the company and get the physician on call on the line. She says, okay, looks good. All right, guys, so fly the airplane, right? One guy is always flying the airplane. The other guy works the problem. So I had I was doing the checklist, generator reset. Didn't get reset. I'll recall it. You can see the generator is off. Uh, APU is still not started. If you go to status... There's the APU. Hold on one second. Oxygen, uh, hydraulics. Da, 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 da. Did I not start the APU? Let me see one thing here, guys. Oh, there it is. APU running. Okay, that's good. And the generator's off. We also um, had to we get the equipment cooling reset. We reset that. I should have waited one minute. I got distracted when they called up from the back. So we get the APU going, generator off. Once you get those checklists complete, you clear it by hitting cancel, recall. I'm going to make a PA to the people, then we'll start looking at the vert. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's Captain Rich. Welcome aboard. We've leveled off at our cruising altitude of 30,000 feet. Uh, for those of you who uh, can look forward, you can see that we do have some medical situation going on with one of the passengers. Please remain clear. I'm going to turn the seatbelt sign off so you can use the lavatories, but please remain clear of that area where the patient is being, uh, passenger who's now become the patient is being looked at by on-call medical personnel. Uh, we should be landing on time in Atlanta in about one hour and 50 minutes, expecting an early arrival. Once again, uh, thank you for your patience, and please remain, remain clear of that area that we are administering help to the patient. Passenger, right, guys? Um, lousy PA. All right, so we're here. Diversions. Ta -da. Um, most common reason to divert is weather. Coming in, you're holding, you run out of time, you, you bounce on over, get refueled, and go. It gets really complicated when you're on a long international flight plan because sometimes you can divert and you, they don't even—they can't even handle a triple seven. So say you're over Central Asia, going from Kennedy to New Delhi, and you put it down in uh, Kazakhstan because they have a 13,000-foot Soviet-era runway. Well, that's not a real good idea because they might not have medical, they might not have stairs, they might not be able to fuel you, and your airplane is dead in the water. And now instead of having one medical emergency, you got 200 because people are sick on the airplane, they're stuck, you're running out of fuel, the lavatory's over flooding. Big deal. So what do we do? We call the company. We contact the company. Uh, we have them look at NOTAMs for airfields. Think of all that stuff. Hey, hey listen, you can't go to Kajikistan. They, they can't even service a 777. You can't go to um, Azerbaijan. They don't have the hotel rooms. They don't even have the medical facilities in Croatia. There's a lot of things. So they'll give you a, a field that has medical facilities, can fuel a uh, 777, can plane and deplane a triple seven, and uh, and has hospital, the medical medical, and hotel rooms. So they think of all that stuff. Get them working for you. That's my first order of business. Second order of business is like come down to the box, of course. And uh, truth is, you do this first. Here's our closest airport. Uh, here's Philadelphia. I would like to go there. Uh, big big runways. Wilmington has a bigger runway. Um, that's page one or two. Go to the next page. Nope, nothing. But if you wanted to put in, uh, let's say, Baltimore, KBWI, you could type that in. KBWI, they have a lot of runway. Philadelphia has a lot of runway. Dulles has a lot of runway. So Philly, Baltimore, Dulles. And then you get into things like KDCA. And today, when we call dispatch, they tell us Dulles in Washington is closed due to a presidential activity. They couldn't get into Andrews. They went to Dulles. They've closed the airport for several hours. Uh, Baltimore just had an emergency on the runway. They're close. Yeah, you see where I'm going with this, right? And then Philadelphia. Philadelphia has had an airport fire, which they're dealing with, and the airport is temporarily closed. So they're funneling this big 777, which we're capable of doing, into DCA. So we would go over here. We're going to performance. Let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Performance, landing dispatch. Nope, we want to look at uh, KDCA. We check the weather. Ronald Reagan, runway, 19. All this stuff, import from flight plan. 
Which I did not want to do that. I just got done correcting that, right? KDCA. Ronald Reagan. 1-9. Aircraft. Uh, you can import the weather. That's fine. And here we go. Calculate. Landing distance, 7,100 feet. Turn weight, VRAF. Here it is. So uh, that is landing weight. Heading, we're going to be a little lighter than that, aren't we? We're definitely lighter than that. Let me take a look here. And that, we're at 480. So we're, we have plenty electronic flight bag. Can't really import that. Slope, condition, uh, aircraft, fill ups, configuration, aircraft odds, wing order, weather. Um, I wish I could change this weight. Can I? Now, 480, we get that changed, and uh, check it out. DCA, runway 9, wait. Wait, 480. Here we go. 480. We learn together, right, guys? 480, VRAF 144, landing distance 30, 4330, available landing distance 71. So we can absolutely go in there. Not happy about it, right? But we're going in there. All right, so right now we're continuing on to Atlanta. Our company has a company towards physicians on call. What they are is a group of doctors that we hire. Uh, they call physicians on call, and and our dispatcher contacts them and gets them on the phone. They can talk to us. First thing they want to know is give us the passenger seat number, give their age, give us their their name, and they look up their information. Um, they're gonna he he may have questions. Let's talk about in the back what the flight attendants are doing. They're looking for someone to help with the patient. Flight attendants can uh, administer the defibrillator to get their heart going if they detect no pulse. They, there's a lot they can't do with the medical kit, though. They can't do IVs. That has to be done by a doctor. So they look for a physician and, or medical personnel qualified to deal with a, uh, an emergency. The most likely person to answer the call are paramedics, EMTs, uh, military paramedics, and ER nurses, nurses, they they almost always answer the call. Doctors sit there going, okay, I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I haven't hung an IV in years. I haven't used a defibrillator. I get trained in it, but in years. Um, but okay, so you, you'll. it's hard to get the doctor. You need the doctor because technically you can't put the IV in, which is the most common cause of problems on the airplane is dehydration. They, they leave for the airport four hours prior they arrive and they sit in the terminal. They don't get anything to eat because they think they're going to get on the airplane and eat. Then they get on to find out not going to eat for an hour and a half. It's too bumpy or two hours. Or there's no food on the airplane and you got a low blood sugar. So the first thing flight attendants usually do if someone's going in and out is give them orange juice, believe it or not. I've diverted a number of times for um, medical issues. One three four one five Delta 540s, yeah. And one three four one five. There it is. Washington uh, Delta five forty at flight level three zero zero. Direct Casanova, Charles here in November Delta five forty. Uh, there's direct, and I'm going to do a beam points. How does that look? Looks good. Execute it. LNAV, that's what I asked for. That's what I got. So the doctor on call can't make you divert. However, our guidance is that there are a few situations that we have to divert uh, if it's safe. Uncontrolled bleeding, loss of consciousness. We can't bring them back. Uncontrolled bleeding, loss of consciousness. If, if, we, if, if, we, use it, if we use a defibrillator or if the baby's being born. Okay, thanks a lot, Priscilla. Uh, we'll be on the ground within 25 minutes. We'll have medical personnel meet the aircraft. I'll make a PA. And okay, guys, we have to divert. So uncontrolled bleeding, loss of consciousness, we can't regain it. Babies being born. And watch in Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. This is American 540 medical emergency. Delta 
Left 220 down to flight level 180. No speed restriction. We'll expect the river visual runway 919 uh, nine, Delta 540. All right, guys. So there's 18,000. And uh, we're going to come in here. We're going to go up the speed. Level change. Make sure your at-home throttles come back. And I am going to get on the radio. That's not coming back. Delta 540, come on, baby. Is it coming back? Slowly. And ladies and gentlemen, it's Captain Richard. Um, as you may have noticed in the back, a patient, uh, has, the passenger has become uh, in a situation where we need to divert for medical reasons. So we're going to land at Washington Ronald Reagan Airport within 20 minutes. So I ask that you uh, maintain in your seats I'm going to turn the seatbelt sign back on and for the next 20 minutes. Remain clear of the aisle. Once we land, stay in your seats, and we'll let the medical personnel come on. Uh, I apologize for the inconvenience. We'll be on the ground here shortly. All right, speed brake's coming out. We'll expedite down. We're going to go to the box. We're going to go to route. It's page two. Go to page one, previous page, and put in K, D, C, A. There. Execute it. Go to departures and arrivals. We're going to go river visual at uh, DCA. Index here. River visual Zulu because the river visual isn't in here. And no transition. Execute it. Go to legs. And uh, I think Fergie is the uh, point here. Remove that. Go direct. Fergie. Just get that set up here. We're not going to actually go there. And that's the uh, RNAV approach on in. We'll take a look at that. Let's go to the box. Uh, recall. Checklist electrical generator off. We knew about that. We got our APU running, which is good. Uh, Notes, nope, auto brakes, sure. Let's get a 7,000 foot runway. Let's get it over on three. Landing data we did. Ah, boy. Speed brakes coming up. That's a 540 request lower. Down to 9,000, 2,965, Delta 540. All right, 9,000 is set. Let's go uh, level change. We'll keep it going down. Remember, we're clear to go above 250, below 10. Flight level change. That's a simism, guys. 9,000, throttle's coming back. Speed brakes coming out. Get it on down. How far are we from uh, DCA? KDCA. We are 21 miles and 17,000 feet altimeters. Uh, we're going to do this. 2965. Right hitting 320 and 11985 for Delta 540s here. All right, heading 320. Remember, you got the speed restriction eliminated. Go down here. I'm telling you, this is a busy profile. Delta 540 heavy is out of 12 for 9,000.
All right, descend to 5,000 feet, expedite the descent. We'll expect Fergie uh, Delta 540. Okay, getting a little fast here, guys. So two different ways. Flight level came out of flight level change. That's what happened. We're expediting out of 10. Flight attendants prepare for landing. Taxis on. Now, some, some little point here. Yeah, we're expediting. We're hustling on down. But, you know, you don't do the passenger any good if you end up doing a go-round, right? So... Yeah, we can go fast. We can get out here. But you got to be careful. Uh, make, always fly the airplane. Are we going to 5,000? 5,000. We're above 250 below 10 because we told us to. Um, but I'm going to be at Fergie at 210. Um, so when they turn us around here, direct Fergie, I am going to be at 210. I'm not going to come smoking in. The other thing is you can get yourself shot down going into DCA, as you guys know. Uh, you know, you, you can't be overshooting the... The river and the, flying near the capital, not good, not good. So here comes six for five, uh, sp speed brake levers retracted. We should arm those. Spoilers are armed, auto brakes are armed. Approach breeze, we'll talk about normal altimeters are set. Descent checks complete. Leveling off at five. Left heading 140, Delta 540, heavy. All right, 140, 5,000. I call back. I let the flight attendants know, hey, we should be landing here in uh, about 10 minutes. How's it going? They say, good, we're ready. Okay, we'll be stopping on the runway probably and uh, shutting down engines, and they'll probably come up through uh, 1L or 2L. And so make, we'll make a PA that people stay seated so that they can get to the passenger. They'll say, roger that. Now, guys, the approach, right? All this talk, flights, DCA, the approach. I'm going to show you something. River visual. Look at that ground track. Ready? RNAV. Same thing. So we're going to go Fergie, Derek, fly in. They say to fly the RNAV until you uh, get over uh, uh, Gretz anyway. And then we'll be probably autopilot off coming on around. On the River Visual, they have some recommendations. Uh, 1,800 over the bridge, 1,800 here before you start to turn, 900 over this bridge, all that stuff. Um, after landing at DCA, 7,000 feet of runway. We'll probably stop straight ahead. Otherwise... We'll plan on clearing probably down here at Alpha and parking our gate up here. That's it. Still turning towards Fergie. Got about 10 miles from Fergie. I would start doing it. We uh, started at 11 after. We're only nine minutes into it. They told us we had a half an hour. I'm going to bring this back to 250 on the speed. That's just my feeling on that stuff, guys. Uh, you can definitely get yourself in trouble. Let's go down to the, uh, if you go too fast, you go Yahoo and on in. We go Fergie. How's that look? Looks good. Execute it. We're not going to go LNAV yet, but there it is. We can actually fly a non-ILS. We can go LNAV, VNAV, fly it in uh, when they, if we go down around 3,000 and fly the VTI on in. The air nav on this approach is very accurate. It's 0.11. We're not flying that. We're flying the visual, but that's a 0.11. We could. Uh, Delta 540, send to 3,000 feet. Direct Fergie, cleared the river visual 19. All right, so let's go down here. 3,000 feet. Put that in. Get ourselves down. Slats extend. Power's coming back. I'm going to get to do 10. So, yeah, we started off at uh, 11 after, and or here we are 11 minutes later. We're in good shape. And we're going down. Flight level change. Bring it on down. Why isn't it going down, right, guys? 
There we go. Speed brakes coming out. Below 250. We can go flaps five. Bring this back. Here's our VTI right there. Speed brake extended. Yeah, I want it extended. I want to get down to three by Fergie and get a set up for a uh, approach on this VTI. Vertical track indicator, let it fly it on in. We'll do it visually at the end, but we're in LNAV going direct, coming on down to the VTI. Uh, 19.1, Delta 540s here. Tower Delta 540s, uh, proceeding direct Fergie for the River Visual 19 Mayday aircraft. Delta 540, uh, clear to land, uh, runway 19, and we'll start, shut down on the engine, on the runway. All right, guys, here we are. We're VNAV path. I got two windows open. You got the, v, the ver vertical track indicator is working. See that? 500 is set. We're coming around. Speed brakes extended. Let's bring that up, and we'll arm the speed brakes. And we're going to go gear down. See if we can get these spoilers to arm. Speed brakes are armed. That's good. Auto brakes are three. Gear is down. Look at that. We're on a VTI here. We're flying down the river. Uh, they said you can use it until Gretz. You can use it even before that. And the, on the river visual, on the notes, it said you can fly the uh, river visual until Gretz. I'll show it to you just so you can have a little fun. Uh, right here, Gretz, River Visual, Ar Arnaz Zulu. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so um, let's start getting configured. You definitely don't want to be fast here, guys. You absolutely do not want to be fast. Started at 11. We're 13 minutes in. This is about the best we're going to do with safety of flight. We're flying it nicely. Flaps 20. Let's go flaps 30. Go to the box. 139 is what we're looking for. 140 is fine. 7,000 foot of runway, we are acutely aware of that. There's Gretz right there. This is where they want you to take over uh, manually somewhere in here. The way we'll do it is autopilot off and we'll fly it on in. But we're still doing good. Pass working. It's going to do a big turn here at Gretz right there. There it goes. There's the turn. Staying over the river. BTI centered, 140 in the window. They said 900 over this bridge. Now, it's kind of tricky. If you let the RNAV come in, it kind of brings you on the inside. There's the Washington Monument. That's kind of cool, right? All right, guys, autopilot's coming off. Let's do the before landing checklist real quick. Four landing checklist is complete. We are clear to land. Get it all set up over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. Okay, autopilot is off. Now the VTI should still be accurate. We definitely do not want to overshoot. So if anything, undershoot a little bit. And I'm watching that uh, vertical guidance right there. Staying over the river. Watching my bank. That's that's the runway right there. Uh, we're stable. Over the bridge. Don't get shut down. Don't get shut down. All right, let's get a nice landing. We'll stop straight ahead. We'll tell the people to remain seated. And we'll um, get the engine shut down. The APU is running already, which is nice. And we'll get the medical personnel on board the aircraft. 
Let's do this pilot stuff here, guys. Speed brake is extended. There we go. Stable target, sinking seven. Starting to pick up the Vazis. Getting a little bit low right there. Now there's red over white, looking good. Speed brake's on. I had it back a little much there. Come on, stay on those Vazis, Captain. Little bit of an angling final. Red over white, red over white. 50 feet, I'll start break the sink. Closer to 40, really. All right. Slam the nose down, huh? Reverse coming in. Not going to heat up the brakes. There's 80 knots coming out of reverse. And uh, Delta 540 is going to stop here, sir. Shut down the engines. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the captain. Remain seated, remain seated, remain seated. Parking brakes are set. You can uh, chop them. Engine APU is running. Chop up the engines. After landing checklist. And uh, we're going to wait. Let's go outside. We get the parking brakes are set. Let's go to the overhead. I'm going to put the uh, beacons off, wing off, lights off. This is letting them know it's safe to approach the aircraft, guys. Let's go outside. There they are. They have arrived. Flight attendants prepared. All right, guys, Father Time, that was cool. Oh, FSI panels sometimes will give you a landing grade. Um, are we going to get one here? Uh, not today, probably. Um, but anyway, guys, that was a blast. Uh, we are now at Washington National. The Let's see, we're at 11 after. We got the word, and we were on the ground at 28. So um, 17 minutes, we, we landed, and... Uh, Passengers safe? Who's better than us? No one. All right, it's Father Time checking off from Washington, Ronald Reagan Airport. Let's go get a beer. Take it easy, guys.